Hey YouTubers, Electric Adventures here again with another really um, good retro computer pickup. I'm on a bit of a retro computer bend at the moment, I do know. Um, I suppose it's just the thing you're focusing on at a particular time. Um, but lately there have been a heap of retro system, retro computer systems that I don't have come up on eBay. Now I've missed out on quite a few of them. I mean, just the other day there was yet another SC Sega SC3000 with like 10 inbox cartridge games and everything like that, but it just got too rich for my blood, so I had to back out. Um, and there's been um, there's been BBCs, there's been um, you know different models of Commodore 64s. There's even been a Spectre Video 308 over in the States uh, that I missed out on, although realistically I didn't have the money for it at the time anyway so I let that one go so it shows that they are the systems are out there you just got to be patient enough and there hasn't been a, any online for a little while and then there was a block of them it just I suppose about how things happen but I did manage to win one option and this is the main option that I was actually going for in this because you will notice that there will be some other retro computer pickups around uh, this one because when I start looking for a particular thing then you know other things pop up um, and this is the one I spent probably spent the most money on uh, but I believe it is worth it for what is in this I mean the box is huge for a start we're talking this size oh, look I can't even fit it in camera now amazingly this box actually weighs quite a lot and it only costs $25 to send so the inconsistencies of the Australian Post system totally bamboozle me now this is a system that I have wanted for a very long time um, it's one I've never owned personally myself it's another one that I used at a friend's place but it was one of the three computers that I was going to buy when I was making a decision to um, upgrade from my original TI 994 machine when I wanted to get a new computer and so I was deciding between the Australian built Micro B computer, um, the very first colour model it would have been of that, and it had only just been released, but that was that was probably the most expensive ones of the ones I'm gonna go through now. And then there was the this one here, I'm not gonna say the name of it just yet. Um, and I was deciding pretty much deciding between those two, and then I got shown the brochure of the Spectre Video 318, and the 318 was um, quite a bit cheaper, it was a 50 or or $100 cheaper, plus I got the discount for working uh, in the end, uh, for helping the store manager out, and it's actually what led to my job at that store. So anyway, without further ado, we shall remove lots of newspaper. Uh, my silly dog to go nuts in the background there. Now I've got one pack there, I'll go for the, com I might as well go for the computer first, you can see it. Now, now, it's computer shaped, funnily enough. So it's actually packed really well. There is newspaper padding on the bottom and top of the box. And everything seems to be very well packed. Now the unit itself looks pretty dirty. It's going to need a, a decent clean. But all the keys are there. That's a very good thing for one of these. So it's by Commodore and it is a Commodore VIC-20 and um, the keys, I mean look, the unit is dirty, there's no ifs and buts about that so we've got on the side there, we've got a control port on off switch, our um, power inlet there flipping around to the back now this particular lot, I mean there's been other VIC-20s out there but this one presented a particular value for money which we'll, you'll see as we go through this box. I'm not getting any clarity on the port. So I take it one of those is the um, cassette port and the other one's the I.O. port, similar to the it's Commodore 64. They're not labelled, interesting. And then you've got the socket at the back where the cartridges go. One of those, I, I mean I've never actually owned a Commodore VIC-20 myself and we've got two ports, edge connector ports on the back there. It's actually, you know, it's got a really nice keyboard and the shift cock key, very similar to the Commodore 64 keyboard that came after it. But they're a good solid thing, so other than being dirty, which can be rectified, it does not look too bad. Now, let's go for 
some of these other packages. So we have another nicely bubble wrapped thing here. It's actually interesting how some things are from completely different sizes to what you think they are. Now, as well as Big 20 software, this auction actually had Commodore 64 software as well. Now, I do know that not all of these collections are about to hold up by complete, but they will have some of the titles. So the first one, and look at the size of the box. So it's an Epix Blue Ribbon Game Pack. So the original thing came with World Games, Summer Games 2, Wrestling, Winter Games, and Super Cycle. Okay, so we've got four tapes in there. Championship Wrestling, and the um, tapes are wedged in nicely, so that's still Super Cycle both sides there. It doesn't have anything printed on the other side. Maybe just that one. And that one's just got Summer Games, so we're sort of missing the Championship Wrestling, so that's alright. It's mostly complete. Uh, next we have some interesting titles, so it's also for the Commodore 64. It's Electro World, what is that one? Bojo, Bert the Bug, the Android, Poga, and Zylon, Zy, Zygon Warrior. Okay, put four tapes in there again. It looks like there might be some things on some of the B sides. Yeah, see, look, that's got Bojo and Electro World. So we might be complete there. That's looking good. And there is a little bit of a manual on the side there, too. Now, we also have, I mean, it's a little daggy, but it's not too bad. Reasonably complete is a VIC 20, an introduction to basic part one. So it's there, it's got a little bit of water damage on the box at some stage, but damp. So inside that we have a nice big coloured guide, placed broken into units, very good material. Um, the operating instructions for a cassette unit, and hidden in this box, obviously not the original contents of the box, we actually have a VIC-20 cartridge, GORF. Supposed to be quite a good version. I think Retro Gamer VX demoed it a while back. Uh, Cosmic Cruncher, I take it that's going to be a, like a Pac Man clone. And, and here we go, and here's what makes this auction even worth more is we have some Commodore 64 cartridges, which I don't have any of. So we have Wizard of War, uh, Visible Solar System. International Soccer, Magic Desk One, Financial Advisor, some of those are pretty boring, and the piece of resistance in those cartridges is Pitfall 2, which is really great. Not only don't I have Pitfall 2 for the Atari 2600, I don't have it for any other system as well, so um, it'll be very interesting to see what the Commodore version is like. And this obviously at one some stage came with some cassettes and things like that as well, this introduction pack. It's actually very good getting something like that reasonably, um, reasonably complete for something so old. Because I do like to have the printed material for my retro computers. Now, we haven't finished. There is more. There's actually quite a few more packages here. Okay, most importantly, we have a power supply. Now, <laughs> it is disgusting. We're going to have to clean that up. But other than that, the cables look good. Not the grass near that. But anyway, that's the, the power supply. It's got four prongs there. Interesting enough, that doesn't match what's in the side of the machine, so we may have an issue there. Okay. Let's 
Once you go, no panic, Vic 20 power supplies are a little bit easier to come by. Okay, we have one of the biggest RFs which is I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it includes it's includes the uh, old original um, yeah 300 ohm and 75 ohm outlets. Interesting enough, you don't see them very often in some of the older systems I have. So that's quite interesting. Okay, move on. Right, we have a Commodore joystick. They're not too bad. They've got a really interesting feel on them, actually. And the cord looks all um, complete and good. And another one of our, probably the most common in Australia at least, quick shot variant. And these are actually very nice joysticks. They are very plasticky though, so it'll either work or it won't. But it's another two button one, can be converted to a two button by replacing the cable. Usually there's not enough pins in the cable, depending on which model it is. Can be converted to a two button joystick. Okay, what else we got? Okay, we have, how about that, it's an Arlec plug pack and it has the sockets that are on the side maybe, I'm not 100% sure about that, and it's 9 volt, yes, okay, yep, no, it has the socket, so that's the power supply for the VIC-20, so not having seen one, I assumed it was similar to the, to the later ones, and we also have obviously an alternate RF out adapter so it's got the video socket in the back there and that obviously goes to the switch there so that's yeah so R the RF isn't even built into the machine I didn't know that either um, potentially the um, it'll use the same AV cable as the um, Commodore 64 as well and yes there's more Right, for the Commodore 64, and another title I did not have, is International Karate Plus. And that's supposed to be quite a good title. The tape is in there, and the instructions. And then we have another Commodore 64 cassette collection. It is Giants. It'd be nice if some of these are in there, so a bad reflection there. So we have 720, world class leaderboard, outrun, be great if I have that one, rolling thunder and gauntlet too. Oh excellent. So, how lucky are we? Uh, okay, well we've found our VIC-20 introduction to basic part one. And take one and two. Oh damn, and in here we have giants. Outrun, oh outrun, okay, now we got I saw the giants there and didn't read there. So we have outline. So we'll see what else is loose in here. And you never know, we might be able to get Gaunt 2 would be my next best pick from that one. So what else do we have? We have for the Commodore 64 still. So we have, it's obviously a, um, like a shareware production near yeah, Rockhampton, Western Australia. Same area as the guy that used to publish my MSX software in Australia. So, Balloony brings back nostalgia of um, you know of home -based, based publishers back then. There was nobody in Australia really to get people, you know, get people who wrote software. And um, let's put a bit of check what's in there. Yep, yeah, Balloony. And this one is Follow Me. So that's a memory game. The tape is in there. And some of these home production tapes are not, you know, they won't necessarily have a supreme chance of working. Okay. And there is more. Okay, we have. Interesting. 
Albert Software bonus cassette games for the Sharp MZ700 family computer. Now, is the MZ700 a custom one or is it an MSX variant? I don't know off the top of my head. I'll have to check it up. These programs are written in machine code. So BASIC is not required to be loaded first. And the very fact that you have to load BASIC first means that the Sharp is probably a pre-MSX variant. And probably another one that I need to get at some stage. But wow, I've got some games. So they are Send One, Painful Man, Round Shoot and Land Escape. Bad impressions there. Right, next. We have for the Commodore 64 Laser Wheel. And yes, Laser Wheel is inside. Next, we have for the Commodore 64 Lost in Space. Containing Lost in Space. Uh, next, we have a Master Ops game 64 Street Beats. Show on the backs of some of those others. You're not having much trouble, much with light, light today. And that one looks good. Um, another independent title, but this one from Southampton, Hampshire. So import. And that's called Evil Zaphos for the Commodore 64. It's definitely got the right contents. And similar sort of packaging. Bomber copter. Um, oh, here we go, and here is a Radio Shack C20 cassette tape, as you used to buy on the Radio Shacks down here, all branded up. On the inside it is actually the tape, it's got nothing written on it. But you never know, sometimes you can find all sorts of things on um, tapes with no labels, and discs with no labels. And another one, and this one rings a bell from some Gunstar. By Firebird Software. That one looks very similar to another. Yeah, okay. That one should up, so there we go. And also for the Commodore 64, I would say. It says in any. Oh, there it is down there. Chessmaster 2000. Which is actually supposed to be quite a good chess game. Yep, it's got Testmaster 2000 in it, so there wasn't a tremendous lot missing. It's mainly that Giants collection that's got uh, the stuff missing out of it. So I have made an absolute mess of the um, of the layer now. Um, so I need to go tidy that up and um, see if I can get that Commodore, uh, sorry, the Vic 20 fired up. Um, there is a tremendous lot of software here. I am not going to be able to do a play of everything. Um, because this was a Vic 20 pickup, I'll do the two Vic 20. Um, cartridges and I'll select a couple of the Commodore 64 stuff just to um just to give it a go. And okay here we go with Pitfall 2 on the Commodore 64. It's got a bit of music playing there. Now Pitfall 2 has quite a bit more extensive map than even Oops. Ah. Than Pitfall 1 and it has the thing where when you die you go back to the last save point. The music gets a bit slower. So I haven't played this for a very long time so I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to, how I'm going to go. No. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, it looks like you're going to die about yeah, three times and then you're pretty done. Okay, you can go back to, oh okay, you, you 
just get back to zero with no score. So you don't actually have much height you can get to, you can't crouch. <laughs> so this is probably not a very good demonstration of this game at all. After much experimentation, I worked out that you had to run underneath the bird at the right appropriate time. Right. I sort of worked out the frogs in advance there. You can fall down and go into the next level. But there we go, we've got a gold bar. So we're going to score up and work. Going faster again. So that's our first goal bar. Let's see what's down here. Ooh, a little bit. Oh my goodness, found another one. So I mean, you've got, you know, so many gold bars to get, and look, another save point. So when I die, I'll come back to there. But it takes a while to figure out where all the pieces are and to map the game. Really good timing is very important. Alright, other than the really bad beginning I got off to, not a bad game and definitely be playing some more of that one. Right, here we go with Wizard of War. Okay, where are we? Okay. So this is a port of an arcade game. You've got to go around frying the monsters. That doesn't look to be a too bad port at all. Okay, now we've got the um, dinosaur that looks a bit like Barney. Level. So it's a relatively simple gameplay mechanic to start with, but as you can see, they're already starting to fire more. I think they've captured the um, essence of the um, game quite well. that I was supposed to kill and stop escaping. So it's actually great to have some more Commodore 64 games and great to have some more cartridge-based games. 
Why buy just a video game from Atari or Intellivision? Invest in the wonder computer of the 1980s for under $300. The Commodore VIC-20. Unlike games, it has a real computer keyboard. With the Commodore VIC-20, the whole family can learn computing at home. Plays great games, too. Under $300, the wonder computer of the 1980s, the Commodore VIC-20. Coming soon, Commodore brings you Gorf, the wonder arcade game, and Omega Race in home versions. Right, just a quick update on the VIC-20. Um, couldn't demo the uh, two games, Cosmic Cruncher and Gorf. Um, the VIC-20, I couldn't get tuned into the TV. I um, tried using the video cable that I have for the 64 that just goes to one AV and a single mono output. And I can sort of get a picture, but it's um, it won't stabilise and stay still. So I have gone and um, got some DIN connectors and I'll grab an old video cable and I'll just wire it up. Or I'll wire it up so I can um, I can play with it. Just make absolutely sure. Otherwise, we may have to open the Vic 20 up, and um, which is going to do it anyway because it's absolutely disgustingly dirty. Um, and just check we may have some capacitor problems there. So I'm um, not too worried. I reckon I get it worried and compare. I mean that was a big lot of stuff, and uh, it was worth it for the software and the um, the extra bits and pieces. And even these cartridges go for ten, fifteen dollars each. Anyway. Um, but, but I'll get it working. It could even be that ARLAC power supply is not really outputting the right voltage too, so I'll, um, I'll get the multimeter out and test that. But anyway, um, I'll leave it at that and I'll catch you next time.